Um, I am not a big fan of anime or, 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 or manga. Uh, I never really got into the, the over-the-top style and, and the, the very, you know, expressive characters, if you will. The only ones I read were like Dragon Ball and One Piece, a little bit of uh, Great Teacher Niska. That's about it. I, I also, as you know, <laughs> detest exposition and world building, which are two of the most prominent elements in anime or manga. And just the whole culture surrounding anime and manga. You gotta stop saying anime and manga. You know, cosplay, kawaii, and just the, 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 the extroversion of the whole thing just makes me want to puke. Nothing against people that like that, but it's not for me. I'm a bit too introverted for that. <laughs> so in this episode of Please Don't Make a Scene, we are reviewing Alita Battle Angel. In the distant future, a cyborg woman wakes up and can't remember who she is or where she comes from. But with the help of her new friends and some old enemies, she will find her place in this divided world. So what can I say about Alita Battle Angel? I know I'm really showing my limitations as a critic here, but there really isn't that much to say about the movie. Except for some motion capture performances, this movie is remarkably unremarkable. But not from a lack of trying though. The script, which is written by James Cameron and Leita Calgaridis, uh, based on the manga called Battle Angel Alita. Not sure why they switched, switched the words instead of, I mean, if you're gonna change the title, then change the title. Whatever. <clears throat> I'd never even heard about the, the manga, which I think it was from the beginning. The manga is the one you read. Yes, it is. I never heard about the, the manga before I saw the trailer for this movie. But it does feel like the script is based on a comic book. There are so many plots crammed together that it feels like different episodes in a, in a TV show all. Because first you have the story of Alita trying to figure out who she was before uh, the doctor, Dr. Ido, played by uh, uh, Christoph Waltz, um, if he, he found her on a, on a scrap heap. Then there is the story of the- Stop, 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 stop. Hey, 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 hey. You. Past me. Shut up. I forgot to tell you, um, there's gonna be some spoilers um, from now on. I guess throughout the entire video so uh, unless you've seen the movie or, or unless you don't care about spoilers uh, big warning rest of the video spoilers but uh, back to you back to you doctor and his search for the man who killed his daughter and after that you have the story of Alita becoming a bounty hunter in the official bounty hunter society and then there's the story of her joining the Motorball League, which is this cool futuristic sport where you, you chase a ball, but instead of running, you're, you're riding on uh, rollerblades or inlines. Whatever. There's also a pretty nice uh, and innocent story about Alida falling in love with this scruffy looking but charming guy that harbors a dark secret. And like I said, all of this is crammed into a movie that is barely two hours long. I mean, it's two hours and like 15 minutes or something. So without the credits, yeah, you're, you're just about at the two hour mark. And the different plots do work together, but it feels very bloated and contrived when you're trying to tell a story through so many B-plots. And let me digress for just a second. <laughs> when you're writing a script, there are certain structures you can follow to make the script more coherent you don't have to follow them but it, you know it it helps both you and the audience understand what's going on and one such structure is well it's basically cause and effect each scene has to inform the scene that came before you know this thing happens and because of that this things happen there is a cause and effect another way and a way that i would say is a bad way of writing a script is a script where nothing flows together. There's no cause and effect from scene to scene. Each scene is just something happening and then you're moving on. So you have this scene happens and then this thing, scene happens. 
So basically this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. There's no, there's no uniformity to the scenes and it becomes very, very choppy, if you will. And I just wanted to explain that, so digression over. <sighs> so, um, Alita Battle Angel does follow the uh, cause and effect structure, sort of. Because all these different storylines that I mentioned earlier, because first you have the story of Alita trying to figure out who she was before, then there is the story of the doctor and his search for the man who killed his daughter. And after that you have the story of Alita becoming a bounty hunter in the official bounty hunter society. And then there's the story of her joining the motorball league. There's also a pretty nice uh, and innocent story about Alita falling in love with this scruffy looking but charming guy do feel the purpose of pushing the story forward. But so many of them could have been cut. A good example of this would be the Bounty Hunter storyline. Early in the film, we get to know that a serial killer is stalking the streets, killing women. Soon after, Alita sees uh, the doctor, Dr. Ito, um, coming home late one night with a nasty cut on his forearm. She gets suspicious, of course, because she thinks maybe he's the killer. So she follows him the next night he ventures out. We see him stalk a young woman and of course we we believe he's the killer, but it turns out he's not. He is a bounty hunter who is looking for the killer. He then tells Alita that he became a bounty hunter because he was looking for the man that killed his daughter. And he might as well earn some money while he's killing bad guys. The guy who killed the daughter though is never found. He's never mentioned after this. Um, the whole murder plot was just a way to uh, introduce that there are bounty hunters in this world, which we already knew from earlier in the movie when we got some exposition. Alita then wants to become a bounty hunter, because whenever she fights, she gets these uh, glimpses of her past, which of course is part of the plotline where she's trying to figure out who she is. And after she becomes a bounty hunter, she tries to unite all the other bounty hunters uh, with her, of course, <laughs> to help her take down this big thug that is chasing her. Uh, that's part of a, of a, of a different uh, subplot. But nobody wants to help her. Later in the movie, her job as a bounty hunter forces her to kill her love interest because he's been wrongfully accused of murder. And that's part of yet another plotline. After that, the, the bounty hunter story, or the bounty hunter plotline, kind of fizzles out. But the first 20 minutes of the movie are focused on Alita finding out and wanting to become one of these bounty hunters. But then it doesn't really lead anywhere. It runs its course and then we're on to the next plot, which takes up about another 15 to 20 minutes, only to not really have a satisfying ending uh, either. Now don't get me wrong, all of these different plot lines are resolved, if you will, except for two, but those are more, you know, set up for a sequel. And they do tie together in clever little moments throughout the movie. But having so many of them and allocating so much of the runtime to explain all of the different plot lines makes the movie feel very, very bloated and, and just full of exposition. The main plot is about Alita trying to find out who she was before Dr. Ido woke her up. And that is more or less resolved uh, halfway through the movie. But certain details are kept vague uh, for the sequel. And the, then the rest of the movie deals with these subplots and it all really um, only amounts to world building and like I said, setting up the next movie that, that's not even you know being produced yet. There isn't even a proper ending because they want to set up a sequel. It, it sort of ends with Alita killing a, a mid-tier thug, who we find out in the first half hour, mind you, is controlled, mind controlled, by the real baddie. And that little fight that goes on be between those two, Alita and the, the mid-tier thug, is the climax of the movie. Still, the movie wasn't a complete failure. I still enjoyed the action to a certain extent. There isn't an overabundance of action in the movie and Alita tends to use like the same three or four moves in every fight scene, but it was still enjoyable. 
But then we get to the CGI. This is where the movie truly shines. Now I know, yeah, we don't really talk about CGI anymore because like every movie has great CGI, but, but the world and all the other stuff in Battle Angel Lida is all, you know, well made. It doesn't really stick out. But Alita as a fully rendered CGI character is amazing. From the first second that Alita wakes up after Ido puts her back together, you never ever doubt that she is a real person. Or I mean that that she isn't a real I, I mean, uh, or that she is a what I'm trying to say is Alita really blurs the the line between uh, reality and animation. Because we have seen fully computer animated characters in movies for decades now, but it's only in the last 10, maybe 15 years that we have seen CGI characters that are supposed to, yeah, be indistinguishable from uh, real characters in a movie. And while some movies have made a valiant effort, there's always been those little details, especially in the face, that always makes these characters feel slightly, um, not human. This effect is what we call the uncanny valley. Alina manages to get out of the uncanny valley though, and while I think there will always be some little details that ruin the illusion, Alita is the closest we've ever gotten to create a perfect animated human being. Except for the eyes. Alita has those typical extra large anime eyes. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about. And I guess that makes sense for her having those if you want to make a faithful adaptation of a uh, manga or an anime. The problem is though that Alita is the only fully animated character in the movie, except for one other, but you know, it's not hard to spot that he's animated. And she is also the only character with those big eyes. The rest of the cast just have their, their normal regular eyes. So she sticks out like a sore thumb whenever she's interacting with the other characters. The big eyes do have a point in the story, but, and you guessed it, they're keeping it vague for the sequel. All in all, Alina Battle Angel was an okay movie, I suppose. You know, it was, it was, it was well made. The actors were fine. It wasn't a, you know, poorly put together movie. But for my taste, in my opinion, it was way too bloated with exposition and B-plots. The main story and most of the character development gets pushed aside in order for uh, th the world building to be fully realized. But if you like world building, if you like uh, shows like Game of Thrones, or if you like the MCU movies, or you just, you know, like anime and manga, you will probably enjoy this movie much more than I did. Because this movie, it wasn't really a movie. It was, it was world building and set up for a future franchise. A franchise that might never happen based on, you know, how the box office goes for this movie. So they're really gambling. And it's always a gambling when you're trying to set up an untested universe like this or an untested franchise, I should say. And also because I'm probably not alone in thinking that this movie was, it was everything I hate about movies. But I have to realize though that my opinion isn't the same as most people when it comes to, to movies like this. Oh, well, looks like I had a lot to say about this movie. Oh, well, that's that. Um, That's uh, uh, Alita Battle Angel. I mean, if you like anime or manga, like I said, you should go see it. You're probably going to like it. But um, if you like a well-structured story, eh, stay away. If you liked this video, uh, give it a big old thumbs up. But if you disliked it, you know, yeah, give it a big old thumbs down. If you did like it, however, and you want to see more stuff that I make, more uh, reviews and more uh, live shows, you should uh, hit that subscribe button and little bell thing so you're always uh, reminded when I release a new video. And also, I have a Patreon, like everybody else. So if you want to support the show a little extra, be sure to be sure to check out my Patreon. But um, that's that, and until the next video, have a good one.